Eugenie, um, there's a slight difference in the way you started the match and the way you finished the match. Would you agree with that? I would, but even though it was a little close in the first set, um, I still felt I was you know, very close to playing well, so I wasn't too worried. I knew it would click after um, you know, a few points or games, however long it took. So I'm happy that um, it did finally, and I was really, my shots were a lot freer in the second. Can you, can you figure out what it is inside you that enables you to finally click? Well, like you you would, you <laughs> of course, the goal is to always, you know, start as well as I can. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and you have to kind of figure a way out of it. Um, you know, I, I was just really trying to go for my shots. I think she got a lot of balls back and would hit a few good slices, and, you know, it just took me a, a little bit of time to get used to that. And once I did, you know, I was ready for it and was able to really uh, move forward on her balls. So, you know, it just took a little bit of time, but I'm happy I adapted and, um, you know, really kind of moved forward without looking back in the, in the second. Did you feel uh, that you played better than the first match, or how, how would you assess your, your level of play compared to, to the first match? I think I did play a little bit better, so I'm happy that it's improving. Um, you know, I think it was important for me to, to try close out some points at the net when I could, because she was getting a few balls back, and to really uh, go for my shots a little bit more. You know, when I was stepping in and being aggressive, um, I felt really in control, and that's always my goal. When you have an error, you often will stop at the baseline, put your hands on your hips, look down. And I'm trying to figure out if that is a um, sort of attempt to collect yourself and move on or whether you're giving yourself a talking to and then are moving on. Well, I always try to learn from what mistake I made and then as quickly as possible forget about it, which is much easier said than done. Um, you know, sometimes it lingers a few points, but that's really... What I'm trying to work on is to, okay, learn from it and then move on right away. Tennis players, we need to have short-term memory, and um, so I'm always kind of striving towards that. But um, I should I should probably do that a bit less, so you'll see less of the hands on the hips from now on. Has it uh, been a particular source of pride for you that you've been able to take your strengths to each surface now? Yeah, I think uh, I like all the surfaces, and, you know, I don't feel like I can't perform on any of them, which is important seeing as we change surfaces throughout the year. But at the end of the day, I always say to myself, you know what, regardless of the surface, you know, you still have to go play how you want to play. And, you know, anything can happen on any surface and not try to make it too dependent on a surface because it's still about me against my opponent. And um, that's, that's how I see it. So the surface is important, but I don't see it as a huge thing. Would you say adjustments that you make are very subtle then from surface to surface? You know, I would say so, yeah, exactly. I try to always keep my, my basic you know, idea of what I want to do on the court, and it's, it's pretty similar from surface to surface. I change a few things, but you know, I still want to go out there and, and go for it and, and play the tennis I know I can play. You get to Petrovic in the next round, and obviously had a kind of a heartbreaking match against her. So, how do you what do you think about that match and about that match being on grass? Yeah, it's a rematch of Charleston. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know she's a really good fighter, and I've lost her a few times now, so I'm definitely going to be really motivated and uh, just try to play my tennis. You know, really try to take a tour. Were you surprised by the court selection? You got kind of ahead of Ivanovic, who was on the court three, and you were on court two. And do you feel a bit also the People, I mean, you have had a good year that you feel you become more popular here at Wimbledon? Well, I hope so, you know, with good results, you know, you hope to uh, have more fans and things like that, and I feel that from this year. Uh, in terms of the courts, well, yesterday they put Murray on court one and Dimitrov on center court, so they kind of mix it up, and it's out of my control, so I don't worry about it. But I love the court. I love, I mean, I love all the courts at Wimbledon, so I won't complain. They can put me on court 19, and I'll be happy. What do you remember about playing, excuse me, playing Pekovic at the Rogers Cup? That was a long time ago. <laughs> I remember it being a really big occasion for me at the time. It was my first wild card into the main draw at the Rogers Cup, so it was a big deal for me. I remember it was really close at the beginning, and I stayed with her, and then, you know, in the end she kind of overpowered me a bit, but I learned a lot from that match. And, um, you know, I think that's when she was playing really well. She was 10 in the world. So um, we've both come a long way since then. So I'm not going to 
think about that match or even the one in Charleston. You know, it's a new match on uh, Saturday. You, know, you, when you, you said about the only subtle differences between the, the surfaces, but how much potential do you think you've got to become a better grass court player as the, as the years go on? I, I don't, yeah, so I don't, you know, want to change too much from surface to surface, but I do like grass a little bit more, I think. When I'm not slipping and falling, I enjoy it. Um, I think it's it suits my game and it rewards a player who takes it early and, and tries to move forward. And when I every time I go to the net, you know, I have a pretty good, you know, ratio of success. So I'm trying to do that more and more. And I think that'll, you know, help me perform well on grass over the years. Does it make much of a difference to you that the crowds are like compared to Australia with a chance and all that other stuff? And here it's might as well be in a church, sort of. <laughs> well, for the Australians, they still have their, you know, crazy Aussies. I don't know what they're called. I thought maybe they would kind of turn into my genie army, but no, nope, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, I think it's it's good to appreciate the difference. You know, at Wimbledon, they're very polite and. They, I don't know, they respect the sport of tennis so much. So, you know, it's, it's very classy, and I think it's, uh, it's a nice change-up. Any, any, any issues with the knee, or just that you slip at the, 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 the match before and then you just... Yeah, yeah, no issues. Um, you know, the tape was actually more of a hindrance than helping, so I ripped it off, and it actually, my knee didn't hurt at all. So um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'll tape it from now on. But, um, yeah, it was just kind of a preventative thing to make sure it didn't get worse or something, but it feels good. Um, Canadian tennis has seemed to really have come on in the last few years. What do you put that down to? Luck. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we've, a few of us have done well around the same time, and I think that's a happy coincidence. You know, for example, me or Milos and Vashik, we've all come from completely different backgrounds and have succeeded in completely different ways, so I wouldn't pinpoint a specific common fact but I think it's it's a good thing it's good timing and I think because of that the popularity has grown in Canada and um, you know I hope I can help to make it continue to grow how hard was it to uh, well not hard but to 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 wait because you were the second match and then because at Sanga you could the third match and the first match was a five setter so how how was your lean in terms of waiting and waiting and waiting? It was a really kind of crazy day. It's um, I've never been put in a situation like this because I basically had to deal with two fifth setters. So it was it was super weird. Um, I warmed up. I don't even know how many times waiting for it. And um, but you know it's that's the sport. That's what makes part of what makes tennis tough is the scheduling. You know, it's not like hockey or basketball where in three months they know what city and at what time they're going to play us. It's like Anything goes because there's no time limit, which is a great thing for tennis. So I'm not going to complain. But yeah, the men's fifth setters. I mean, I was just happy it wasn't like an Isner Mahout thing. But um, <laughs> like we were. I mean, both matches had that possibility. So I mean, it just became comical in the end as well because I know Gasca had like 10 match points, and I was just sitting there watching him like, come on, man. But it's how it goes, you know. It makes for good stories after. Do you watch time time one more question. Has another go yet? Okay. Did you watch Tonga's Tonga, Tonga match as well, or no? You were already in your, I mean, in your preparation. You know? Well, I started warming up as soon as that match went on because you never know. It could have been two games, and uh, so you know, warming up, watching the points. Okay, kind of, kind of constantly staying warm, and then when it got close, getting more warm. When it was, you know, a hold. Okay, relax for a few points. Kind of an on and off thing, and uh, yeah, it's just not really stressed because you know we're at Wimbledon, but. That's how it goes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.